This is Twit. Are you going to get a Vive flow, Georgia Dow? I know you're big into uh, uh, virtual reality. I, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait and see. Are you Are you excited to try it out, Leo? So I'm. I'm. You know, I wanted to ask you about it because you use the. Uh, do you use the Vive? You use the Vive, don't you? As well as the Oculus Rift, I believe you do. Yes. And we have yeah. a Vive. I love the Vive. I'm not a VR fan like you are. George's family has three rooms dedicated to virtual reality so that they can all play at once. Um, this looks, this Vive is interesting. It's lighter. It's, it's, it doesn't have a battery in it or power in it. You have to plug it into an external battery. Uh, you don't need to wear glasses with it. It has a op diopter adjustment in there, so you can adjust it to your eyesight. $500, but Vive says the flow is intended more for relaxation. It's not a, I think the others are for gaming more. Um, according to the information, the intent of the Vive is more for sitting back and looking at things, you know. If, if I could run this to do meditations and exactly. phobia experiences in my office, I would be 100% in because I would love to do exposure therapy, which I think is, it, so in, in vivo exposure therapy is when if you have, say, a fear of elevators, we're going to be going into elevators. If you have a fear of heights, we're going to be taking right. you to heights. The wonderful part is that our brain, the ocul our, our actual visual cortex of our brain, it's so powerful that we do believe it if we see it. Like if you've ever done any of the experiences where you're really high up and using like virtual reality, you truly believe that you are there. Your body is like, no, I'm there, don't go. And you'll have the full experience to it. So this would be a wonderful standalone because it's affordable, it's on its own. I don't need to set it up to a system. I don't need to make sure that all the cameras are there and there's no light, it would be standalone. And I could do meditations, make you feel really relaxed and then do exposures. I would definitely and, buy it. And in you a would be able to work. do this. So they, they're proposing a $5.99 subscription per month subscription. But because you tie it to your Android device, it can also be a view screen for anything you can put on your Android phone. So presumably these PTSD treatment programs could be made available um, uh, as an app on the, on the Android phone and it could then be part of, and that's kind of nice because you can control it. You can do additional things with it. It does not have hand controls. And I wonder how you feel about that. HTC said they don't feel like hand controls are rely hand tracking is reliable enough and robust enough, and they're afraid that if they put it on the device and it doesn't do it reliably, it's just bad for the brand. Have you? It, how do you feel about that? I, I I don't like the fact that there's not hand controls. I think that interacting with things, it's better if we interact in person with it. It makes me feel disjointed to what yeah. I am controlling. And I don't think that the system is like when I, when you use like a quest and you have like at least a little bit of hand control, even though it, it's not fully tracking everything, I find that's much better experience for me than being able to use another manner of tracking for it. So that would be another reason why I probably wouldn't get it. But again, we're getting closer to be able to treat people in ways that, you know, they can really be helped. And I think that that's an area of virtual reality that has not been properly explored. Well, and this would be a good candidate for it. It's light. You know, there's no straps that you have to adjust. You're not strapped into the VR headset. It's just like putting on kind of weird, uh, I, I think that there's, there's a there <laughs> I, I think that there's some, there are definitely some places where you don't need to interact, um, that you could just experience a space, um, experience walking around and looking at something without having to actually, uh, touch it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and so like we've, we've done some museum, um, stuff where, where we've, you know, virtual museums where it's like a 30 by 30 space and you can walk around in it and you can, uh, just experience it. You're not, you're not interacting with the statues, you know, the virtual statues. You're just walking around and looking at them. Um, and so so I think that there's definitely a place for not having to deal with all the other bits and pieces to it. Um, I also think that in some cases, there's um, some folks that, that I know have been working on uh, PTSD for, you know, and, and some of that treat, some treatment that's related to it along with, you know, augmenting, <laughs> augmented treatment. Um, and in those areas, they're not using any of that. They're really just experiencing what they what they need to experience <laughs> for some reason HTC took some heat because their uh, photos uh, of the uh, uh, device were really just 
photos of stock, photos of people <laughs> with the device photoshopped onto it. Um, is that the same photo? I don't uh, it's not the same exactly. It's the same person. Same girl. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's same uh, wearing the same clothes. Same clothes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the this is the uh, eye stock photo, and this is her wearing. <laughs> that's the same photo, wearing. You know right. those ad budgets aren't what they used yeah, to. Yeah, I don't. You know they it the fact that they bit. didn't do a shoot is not the end of the world. <laughs> um, I feel you know a lot of times that is the. Um, uh, someone probably used those photos for the like as the test, and then they just what what happens there? Here's the behind the scenes on some of that is you go down, you download a bunch of stuff from iStock, you comp everything in, you say this is what we want to do. So in all the, the the tests for the ads, you all have those things, and now you're going to go out and do the photo shoot. Right. And the photo and what happens is you do the photo shoot and you don't like it as much as the iStock ones, and yeah. you're just like you know let's just stick with the ones we have. It actually works but pretty there, there well. Probably was a shoot. Yeah. There was probably a shoot there that just didn't didn't, didn't go. Make. Okay. Yeah, you did, didn't make it to the thing. It was yeah, weird. I don't think it reflects badly on the product. It's just, you know, maybe on the marketing yeah. department, but doesn't reflect badly <laughs> on, on the product. Those are really expensive to shoot well. You know, like it's not like the, it looks simple, but to light it and to get yeah. it all working and everything yeah. else is yeah. is a thing. And who knows, maybe there was a, you know, there, a time constraint. You know, maybe they didn't have the production yeah. models ready. And now they get to... free publicity about how yes. they use soft photos. So yeah, exactly. It probably is a win for them anyways. Different. I'm glad to see actually HTC exactly. making more because uh, I don't want Facebook to own this space. Yeah. Uh, I think the Vive is a good product. I was worried that they might have decided that it's not enough money to continue development. So it's good to see them making this. Of course, everybody's just waiting to see what Apple does. And uh, it's widely rumored that Apple is both doing a VR and a mixed reality headset. The VR will be out maybe next year and then the AR set the year after. I think that one, one thing that's distinct from what Apple's doing and what everybody else is doing is they're building the production pipeline right. very, very slowly. So if you watch what, what's happening with USDZ and Motion and Final Cut and everything else, they're putting all these 3D tools in that don't make any sense right now. You know, so, so the um, you know, like a lot of those tools, you're like, why would they do that? And and um, and they have object capture so that you can capture 3D objects. And so they're slowly seeding the market with the ability to create the content for it, which is what's missing um, right now. It's it's pretty arduous to build content for um, Oculus or or for the Vive. And so um, so making it something that anybody can do um, is going to be is going to be a game changer. I think when when Apple um, does whatever they're going to do. Um, I think that they're, what they've done is a very, very orderly rollout um, where they're just slowly adding the pieces that need to be added. You can um, see to, it happening in ready. slow motion. It's, it's very Over the last five years. Yeah. Over the last five years. The USDZ, I think, was four or five years ago is when they announced it. And then they've been rolling out object, you know, they uh, reality creator, reality converter, object capture, and, you know, and then, you know, motion now has it. You can open up a 3D model in preview and... You know, and it's it's amazing, you know, and so those are the kind of things that, that are possible right now. George, are you still uh, high on VR and you still play as many hours of VR as you did? I've been really busy, so I have not played as many hours, but yeah, there's some really cool games. I don't, I'm going to get my husband to text me the game that he's playing right now, which it uses the entire room and it's a puzzle game Ooh. where it uses the room and it feels like you're moving around and you're like shooting a whip and then controlling something and then jumping to another platform. Is it like and an escape, you are, a scope. virtual reality escape room kind it of? It is. It's more like Indiana Jones oh. as a feeling. And it works out really well and it's kind of fun and you're getting a little bit of physical activity. And there's a new game by the makers of Arizona Sunshine, which is a zombie, you know, you get to fight together, zombie apocalypse, which is really exciting. And so there are some very cool games that are there. But again, you know, it's it's for a certain set of people that will enjoy these games. I and love I it understand. When, the, when the family gets together to fight a zombie apocalypse. I think it's a real... <laughs> Heartbreak, heart touching mo moment, you know, of togetherness. I like that. Yeah, exactly. I have to say, I, exactly. I, I, we're getting I took prepared. A, yeah, I took an I took an Oculus Quest to, to uh, the, the shore when my, my my extended family all went to the went to the shore in in, uh, in June, and the only thing that slow the only time that that Oculus Quest got set down is when it ran out of batteries. You right, know, like it was it's it really was cool. The kids, <laughs> yeah, the kids were all just completely like. There's yeah. always one kid sitting there w wandering around yeah. in space. I, yeah. it, you feel like you're you're in the future. I remember the first time I put one on. It's like, oh, this is what the future is going to be like. <laughs> well, and and we're still we're still dealing with the 320 by 240 version of this. Right. So really, we're not even where, close where, to what it could be. Yeah. When we start getting into um, higher frame rates, so really we're really clamped down in the 
you know, the 30 or 60 frames per second, uh, and also the very low resolution of 4K per eye, you know, or, or less oftentimes. And so when we, when we start seeing, you know, high frame rates in the 90 to 120 frame per second at, you know, 8, 8K per eye, um, it is completely different. You know, it's a completely different experience as you start to go down that path where it really feels like you're somewhere. Um, and so, so I think that that's going to, we're still, again, we're still looking like everything we've seen so far is like the 320 by 240 video version of what is probably still four or five years away. Did, has anybody ever tried the Pimax? This is an 8K Kickstarter for an 8K VR headset that really looks dopey. I, 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 I wonder if this ever shipped. Uh, they raised. I don't think it. I don't almost, think it. Yeah. I don't think it did. They raised $4.2 million. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. <laughs> we, we, we were all rooting for them. I noticed, I noticed <laughs> estimated delivery uh, January 2018. I'm yeah. thinking, yeah, this might be one of those. Yeah. This is why. For me, it's still all about the content. And, and I think this is what's important about Alex's point, you know, is that the pipeline has to be there of content that you're looking for that. I'm still looking for that one killer app. You know, I tried the, the Oculus and I've tried the Vive and I've got a PS4 uh, VR that I played. Um, and it really, you know, it was, it was a completely different experience. Games that I had played in um, not VR and then played them in VR, I actually enjoyed the immersion a lot better. Um, but to me, there's still, you know, I'm still not completely sold. There's still uh, something missing yet for me to be able to say that it's an essential technology. So I hope as the tech gets better, the content gets better, so you you find that one thing. Maybe this is a solution to the conversation we were having earlier, where you have those face-to-face -face interactions in VR um, in the metaverse, yeah. and that's I, the uh, that that's the tech conference of the future. I, I think that, that that's going to be further away than most people think. You Good. know, I think that when when we talk about, you know, like we we you know we. I've been playing since Second Life. I've been playing with, you know, virtual. And my, my daughter is an interior designer in Roblox. Like she literally, people pay her Roblox money to like do their house up and stuff That's like that. So and cool. so, so I see a lot of, I see a lot of Roblox. And, um, and I, uh, uh, and I've been watching a lot of this and I think that people get very excited about it, but I find the process of the digitalization of a person to be uh, really de dehumanizing. And, and I think that it is, it actually, it is, I spent a, I've spent a lot of time uh, using, you know, using um, uh, Unreal uh, or Epic's uh, MetaHuman, which isn't amazing, by the way, for what what I use it for, uh, which is pre-visualization and everything else. But when we start animating the face, the problem is the face actually, MetaHuman faces look really close to human faces. Like it really starts to close that gap, and it's immediately super weird. You know, like it's it's you know so because it's Uncanny as as Valley, get, yeah, it is. You get into the Uncanny Valley, and you're like, okay. And and the problem is, is to get to that, we're still a long way away. Like from from us being able to like have our own version of it and be able to capture our face accurately and be able to send it back. I did a project where I did a bunch of metahuman, and I would have been happier with the emojis. And and I understand the emojis yeah. a little bit better now, where by lowering that resolution and making it kind of cartoony, I'm totally I'm in, I'm impressed and I'm excited about it, and it's really cool and it's so realistic, but not really realistic. And that's the part that I think I think it's going to take us at least a decade. And I think that I don't know if we're going to really feel like we need it. You know. Well, it's the it's the eyes, right? Like it's always yeah. the eyes in video games, even the best rendered video games, the eyes and the way that the pupils dilate and where that they're looking is off. And because we have a dedicated center of our brain that's actually tracking with, with this mirror neurons, we know that it's off. And that always right. causes this disjoint. And it really bothers me in video games. And I would much rather have an animated version of people where I don't expect it. When it gets so close that yeah. it's real, it's similar to you, Alex, when you're looking at people with a blurred background and you're like, it's so close to being okay, but it's not. Your brain keeps on going, okay, not okay. Okay, not okay. And so that same thing happens. But when it's a picture of a person that is really close to a person, we're now misreading all of those firings of how they're reacting to things. And they look a little bit dead eyed and that yep. we don't react very positively or, to at all. It, like if they were zombies, it's totally fine because we would expect <laughs> the dead eye look, but you they're probably don't anyway, want right? to interact with your friends as zombies. So that's well, why and, the shark in the suicide squad isn't so threatening because his eyes aren't dead. Yeah. 